Greetings YouTubers and welcome to the channel. Well, we're going to be doing a little bit of work today on this 2004 Acura. It has a wheel bearing issue. We got some noise. I believe it's coming from the back, but we're going to check that out. What we're going to do today, we are going to go ahead and try to give us a couple wheel bearings. Uh, well, we bought two just in case. Uh, they were pretty cheap, uh, $30 uh, on eBay uh, through a dealer. Can't beat that. And these are the pressing kind. Of course, you're going to have to have a press, and you can get a press. There's a lot of tutorials on that. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take off to get the back wheels off and everything, and go ahead and see if we can get these wheel bearings in. Now, I ordered these. They say they will fit the front and back. So if the back ones are not bad, then if the noise is the front, then hopefully we are good. So, boy, these are really large wheel bearings for such a little car, but we'll go ahead and see. we got the other one there. Yep, so let's go ahead and see what we've got done so far. All right, so on this side, I pretty much got the back end up the air. Got my jacks under here. And I've gone ahead and taken some of this stuff off here. Now, this stuff is pretty straightforward. Uh, a couple 14 bolts, a couple uh, 15 millimeter uh, bolts holding on the caliper. One thing about this caliper is to make the, your life a little easier when you go take this off, there's a bolt on this brake line right here and also down here on this brake cable. I didn't take this one out on this side because I actually got that loose, but I, I did take the one out on the other side. And uh, I do believe both of these back calipers here are frozen because these pads are pretty much, they look like they've gotten really hot. And I can't get this piston to be pushed back in the board. This is very common for a lot of Hondas and Acuras, but that's something we'll deal with later. Now, I've got all this off, and um, I've been kind of spinning this. And this side seems okay. So this is pretty much what you got to do with any car anymore. Unless you have some sophisticated equipment, you can put little sensors on each wheel and have a radio or something and watch a graph to figure out where the noise is coming from. But if you don't have all that and you're just a shade tree mechanic, well, this is pretty much how you got to do it. So you got to take all this stuff off. But I went on ahead and took all this other stuff off here because I wanted to check this caliper piston there. And I believe that's going to be bad anyway. So this way I took all this off. The rotor comes off fairly easy and the bracket's not very big. And really it's about it, some 14 and 15 millimeter bolts. Now, since this side's okay, we'll go to the other side. Now, I've already gone ahead and gotten most of this off. Yes, that is a 1942 jack. Still using it. I got this side off here, and you can see some of the stuff here. And this caliper, well, it is definitely froze up because these pads on this side, check that out. That caliper is not going back into its bore. And I talked to the, the kid that drives this, and he doesn't hardly ever use these emergency brakes. So if that emergency, emergency brake is pulled there, well, that caliper still is not going to go back into its bore. So we're going to have to deal with this a little bit later. So we get everything off here. The only thing I haven't done is actually take this here off. I'm going to pop this off. All right, so i got my hammer here. Hey, let me know where you're watching from right now. And let's see. You can go ahead. I don't want to... Usually these come off pretty easy. Tap it all the way around. Yeah, I got a claw hammer. Go ahead and put some comments in the set comment section below. I'm too lazy to go back and get the big ping, ping pong hammer. So we gotta get this off. And... and to actually check these wheel bearings by feel and by to listen, this is pretty much you gotta get these rotors off. You gotta just be able to spin this hub to verify if it's bad. So let's go ahead and check this one out because the other one is really smooth. And nope, here's our bad one. Hear that? So there's our noise. I can even feel it. Oh yeah, yep, I can feel it right there. See that? It's kind of it's not smooth. So good. All right, so we got our. Wheel bearing, figure out here which one is bad. Now, what we got to do is go ahead and get this uh, wheel bearing out. There's some bolts behind here, and this should pull off. I was worried that I'm going to have to pull this whole assembly off and press it out, but I do believe there are four bolts back here, and this whole thing will come off. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that off. All right, so I went to loosen up all these little bolts that hold this plate on. Forget it. Don't even waste your time because this hub has to be pressed off. Then this has to come off. You know, it's pretty typical 
on vehicle. So I guess we'll go ahead and start taking these bolts off on the back there. All right, so I'm on my last bolt here, and these are 14s, and there's how long they are. And I don't know if that bearing is actually here into this spindle back here, if you want to call this that. I got a feeling it's probably back there, you know, but we're going to go ahead and take this off for now. I mean, I could have got wrong bearings. They look a lot, look like, they, let me try that again. They do look a lot bigger than they should be, but we'll find out. Now, I know on the line, I thought I saw a picture of this whole assembly with a bearing on it, so I, I don't know. Don't remember. I have to go back and look at all my videos. I have so many videos. I have over close to a thousand videos now on YouTube, so all right, there's our last bolt. And now... Well, that was pretty easy. Ta-da! Uh, here's our berry. Okay, good. Good. And you know what? I almost messed up. I forgot about this speed that sensor right there. The ABS. Boy, that was stupid. I was going to take that out, but it's okay. So there's that, and... Boy, uh, unless this whole thing here is the bearing, I'm not sure what's going on here. So let me go over here and look at this other bearing. All right, so yeah, this is not the right bearing. See, this is so much bigger than this. That's the bearing there. If I turn this whole assembly like this, the bearing is actually this part right here, the inside part where the dust cover is. And you can see... The inner, the inner part will fit, but the outer part will not. So, we'll just call the local parts store. And the guy said he'll just buy one, since we only need one. But it is bad. I can feel it. So, these are the things you got to, you know, worry about and get into. So, we're going to have to press this out. We'll be pressing it. Let's see. looks like uh, down that way eventually. All right, after doing some research last night, I found out these will only fit the front of the vehicle. The back of the vehicle has actually smaller wheel bearings, so we've got a fix for that, but for now. And also, one thing to remember, I you know, this vehicle is a TSX a 2004 2.4, the front wheel bearings are the press-in type. Some of these have ABS, and you got to remember, one side will be a magnet on this, and the other side will not. Sometimes the seal is a different color to let you know that it goes on the inside or the outside depending on where your ABS seal is. And the back is just one big assembly that just kind of bolts on with big four bolts, especially on this TSX. All these accurates are different, so you'll have to do your research before you order any parts. And don't mess up and make any mistakes and uh, costing you some time. Like sometimes it happens to me very rarely on eBay when I buy parts I get into this situation, but it's probably something I overlooked briefly. We'll just go ahead and get this side here back together. So uh, if you're going to be pulling one of these apart, here's kind of a look at how it's kind of set up. And you'll just have to have some basic general tools, uh, probably just some uh, good gloves because a lot of these pieces here are kind of sharp. So we'll go ahead and stick this side together since this wheel bearing checks out okay. And we'll get this together and we'll go ahead and order the other side and go pick it up. All right, before we put it uh, all the way back together, this caliper kind of bugged me and it was kind of froze up, so I popped it out. I just pumped the brake pedal and let the fluid pop this out. It's kind of an interesting setup. You can look in there, a little corkscrew kind of a deal, and there's a rod right there. And when you pull the emergency brake, <laughs> this actually kind of goes up against it. It's kind of self-adjusting, so I've taken all this part out. The bore in there is a little cruddy it's not terrible but this piece here looks okay so i'm going to clean this out and adjust this and screw this back in i'll probably have to take a pair of little pair of pliers and grab the edge of it here kind of screw this back in as far as it'll go and if i hold this just right and this is the emergency brake cable right here if i turn this this actually i don't think you can see that there let me get it up in the camera for you you might see it see how that comes out like that a little guy moves on the center. That's what does the emergency brake. You can buy these whole assemblies for about 50 bucks, but you might want to try to clean it. I don't think they're all that complicated. So let me clean this up and get it back together. 
All right, so I'm gonna do the set this up where you can kind of see it. And I got this flat piece of metal. I'm just gonna screw this all the way back down in. And like I said, this is self-adjusting, so. So you don't wanna to try to compress these. When you take your brake pads off, get something like this and screw this all the way back in. Put your new pads on and pump your pedal up and that will take care of that. That's better. I'm gonna just put the seal around it there. Strange setup. And there we go, all the way back, as far as it'll go. A little bit more, still going, still going. There we go. Wow, this thing goes way in. All right, so there we go. All right, there we go. Got our seal pushed back in there, and I did snap this bolt off here earlier, right there. I did get it out, it's fairly easy to get there. That actually is the release handle, if you will, that screws in there. So, all right, we'll go ahead and assemble this all back together. All right, so I've just about got everything all back together here, but I wanted to give you a good look here how this goes back. It's a little frustrating to get it together. If you've done it a couple of times, then it's not so bad. You can put the spring on last and, and make sure you tighten up your bolt here. And uh, we got our cable. I put the cable on first. Then put this piece here on and kind of, sometimes you have to take a uh, wrench, a little 12 millimeter, I think this is 11, and kind of turn this before you put all this on and line this piece here up over the hole so this bolt and all that will go down on there. And that is about it. Really the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the spring back off and make sure I get this nut tight. And that's basically about it. Now I, made a, I kind of made a mistake earlier in the video. I said that you can you can compress these well you don't compress them you actually spin these and turn them all the way back in so uh, kind of had been a while since i worked on one of these so and on a side note there should be a clip right here that slides in here and holds this cable in but it's not going to hurt anything maybe i'll hunt one up later but it is missing on here so there it is it's all back together and all we got to do is put everything here back together and hit the other side go get our new parts now before i went on ahead here and i cleaned up and made sure these calipers were working. Someone replaced one of the calipers and they didn't replace the brake pad. They just took the brake pad back on there with a uh, new uh, uh, brake caliper and all that. So thankfully the piston in these brake calipers, I do know they are now working. So we'll, we'll have to reuse this pad for now. Clean that little bit of excess up there. But that's the story behind that. All right, for this caliper over here, I basically uh, popped it all the way out and did the same thing with the, like I did the other side. I screwed it all the way in. This is not close up, so that's good. I'll make sure I put a disclaimer in the video earlier. Do not compress these. These are not compressible ones, so that was my mistake. Sometimes I make mistakes, and I, you know, I'll publish the mistakes on video just to show you that we all make mistakes. Well, at least I do sometimes, but anyway... Caliper's good. All we got to do now is go get what we're going to finish up over here with, and that is... And just like that, we got us a wheel bearing. Yep. I had to order a new one. That one uh, came in about three days. Surprisingly, got here pretty fast. So we'll go ahead and stick this one on, and hopefully we'll wrap this video up here shortly. All right, now before we put this on, I did stick the old wheel bearing back on. I wanted to drive it. I wanted to verify these rotors and the caliper here was not freezing up anymore. And look at this. We're, we're good. The caliper is not froze up anymore. It's working just like it's supposed to be, so I don't have to worry about this rotor getting hot and warped and also burning up our pads on here. So now all we got to do is go ahead and disassemble this real quick and put our new wheel bearing on. All right, let's get this back off. Be careful, you got a sensor here. I keep forgetting about that, but that little ABS speed sensor there, you gotta watch. Don't break that. So let's put the new one on now. So as I like to say, it's out with the old and in with the better. Yeah. All right, so I got a bolt started on the other side. And this is what you can do. Just actually just start the bolts in first. Wiggle it around, and that'll help pull this in. And also, there's a little rubber seal on the back of this. Don't forget to put that on, or make sure it's on. It's actually right here. It's kind of hard to see. Right around here. Make sure that's on there, on the back of your new one. It usually comes with it. All right, so let's go ahead and get this tightened down. All right, there we go, guys. I'll let you all worry about your own torque specs. Hey, I can't do all your work for you, all right? <laughs> but man, what a difference. 
can't believe how nice and smooth that is. Well, it's new. I should believe it. But anyway, you get the whole idea. So that's how you uh, change out this uh, rear wheel bearing on this uh, car. And the old one, I just don't think that there is a way to actually take that apart. I mean, you probably could, but I'm not going to waste my time. And it looks like the inner part of the bearing is actually right here. And they got this big piece here that's like pressed on there. And you can see how it's kind of bent. I mean, that thing has got a lot of force on it. So... Anyway, that's that. That's that. I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm not even going to try it. So at this point, we'll go ahead and get all this together, and we'll double check some things and start to wrap this video up. And boom, just like that, we are done. So I'm going to check the other side before we put the wheels on and take it for a ride. I'm going to verify the other side is also free and not binding up anymore since we did all that adjustment on those calipers. And we'll check this side as we hear everybody in the neighborhood running their lawnmowers right now. And we're good there, not binding up. You can see it's kind of working there. We got some shininess on that disc there, so I think we're good. Let's take her for a ride. All right, guys, what a difference. Man, it's so quiet in here now compared to what it was before. Before it sounded like, I don't know, something was grinding all the time at a certain speed, like 30, 40 miles an hour, but not no more. I got the back window down. Let me stick it up. There we go. We're at 45, and it is just so quiet in here now. So, yep, if you got a wheel bearing that's getting bad, well, hopefully this video will help you out. Hey, maybe I'll get 13 views. Who knows? Thanks for watching. Hey, right, everyone. So, that is the end of the video on this beautiful sunny April. Hopefully, this video will help you out. And until my next video, guys, I'll see you later.